Hey YouTubers, D Doc here. And I got a little bit of a project going on this weekend. First, I'd like to say this is the Sunday before Memorial Day, so it's Memorial Day weekend. And let's not forget what Memorial Day weekend's all about. It's in memory of those military men who have served our country to give us the freedoms that we enjoy here in America. So I'd like to thank all of the military men, all our veterans in America for your service. I appreciate my freedoms. My father is a World War II and Korea vet, decorated in both actions with Purple Star and a Bronze Star, or the Purple Heart and the Bronze Star. So he not only was wounded in both actions, but he was awarded the Bronze Star for heroism above and beyond the call of duty. You'll have to forgive the noises in the background. I hear a train is coming by even though it's five blocks away. Sound carries in this small town. And of course you know I live across from the school. Oh, better get some freedom here. There's the air conditioner unit for the school and it's up into the 80s today. So they've got the air conditioning going on. So, what's up today, you ask? Well, I do a lot of motorcycle camping over the summers for my fair share. And recently I've been going out with my oldest brother and it's been a real gas to ride with my oldest brother on the motorcycles and go camping, go riding. Something I always wanted to do since I was a young pup. He kind of started all the rest of us kids into motorcycling. He finally got a motorcycle again and we've been working on it and getting it ready so he can go with me. He had a little setback in the last couple weeks. So I've been spending some time going down to help him out, get his running. And I needed to adjust the rear shocks on my Harley. They're down on the lowest setting and the books advise that if you're gonna carry a load, you should put them up on the highest setting. So that's what I was trying to do. I had to buy the special tool to adjust the shocks, but I'm not always the smartest cookie in the book. And when I got home and put that tool on it, I turned it the wrong way. It wasn't going, go figure. So I put my foot to it and broke the rear shock. Didn't break it drastically. There is a U-shaped retainer washer that goes on the bottom and holds everything up off the bottom eyelet. So in doing some research on how to repair it, you've got to go get a spring compressor tool, specially made for Harley Davidson shocks. Try to get out away from this strap. I know this isn't the best setup, but you'll see why in a minute. Well, I don't have the funds to go buy an expensive Harley Davidson shock absorber spring compression tool. And in uh, talking with my old mechanic from years gone by, we came upon, across a solution that I think is going to do the trick. To compress this shock down, there are two keepers up in the top and you've got to compress the shock down to remove these two keepers. And then you can take everything out of this casing, put this back down on the bottom where it's supposed to be, put everything back in, compress it back down, put these two keepers back in there and should be back in business. Then I just have to make sure that I adjust them correctly. I'll try to remember. So here's my solution I've come up with. Actually, me and my buddy came up with it. So let's see, gonna have to do a little bit of adjusting on the camera here. We had the idea, or we came up with an idea of using two rims.
to make an impromptu, let me turn the screen around so I can see what I'm doing. An impromptu spring compression. So I know I still got the tire on this bottom rim, but I don't have a tire removal machine and it's Memorial Day weekend and I don't want to bother anybody just to go down and pay money to have them remove this tire. I'm going to leave it on for now because it's going to be the bottom base and it don't matter. Uh, I've got these rims to put on one of my cement mixers. Actually, I only got one cement mixer left. I uh, disposed of the other one. To set it up higher, only the center hole is too small. I'll have to eventually grind this out so we can go on the mixer. But until then, for right now, it's going to become a temporary shock absorber spring compression tool. So I'll use the empty one, which is going to be the top, to kind of give you an idea of what I'm going to do. I went to the hardware store and bought two three-inch, three-foot lengths of half-inch all thread and then an assortment of nuts, washers, and a few lock washers. So what I'm going to end up doing, let's say this is the bottom one, I'm going to stick these all threads through the bolt holes, bolt it top and bottom, do all four of them, and then when this, I'll do that on the bottom rim, and then this top rim will sit down over the top with a couple extra washers and nuts, and I'll tighten them down with the shock in between, and that should act as a spring compression tool. So, let's get right at it. I've already cut the three foot lengths into equal lengths, so I have four sets of dowels. I'll go ahead and get this put together. And we'll see what the final outcome is. I think it's going to work pretty slick. Sometimes you know you get a brain fart and things just seem to kind of click together. So I hope this is going to have a favorable outcome. In my mind it works. <laughs> this last all thread in there and then we'll tighten them down on the bottom kind of temporarily place the shock in there and place the top rim on top give you an idea of what it's going to look like my first camp out's in about uh, two weeks so I kind of got to get these shocks adjusted or this shock repaired and the other one adjusted. So what I did here, you can see I've got the four dowels, all thread dowels, and on the back side, a washer and a nut, which I will now tighten down the combination of them.
got me one of those cheap wrenches. And the open end is kind of spread out so it doesn't like to hold onto that nut very well. Before I put the spring in here, I'll go ahead and, or before I do the actual operation, I'll go ahead and uh, get out my good wrenches and make sure everything's secured down properly. But for the purpose of the video, why I think I'll just show you what I got in mind. of it. Let me grab that shock. Shock's going to go right down the middle. It just so happened this rim with its center hole works pretty darn good. Got the sun in my eyes, so I hope you can see this. Well, that's how that's going to kind of set. We have to get this top rim, which will just catch the top of this cap, and push it down, which will free these two clips. Then there's enough room in the center hole. I should be able to take those clips out. going to sit on there pretty good and ideally I'll take these washers and nuts and I'll tighten the nuts all the way down equally and then tighten them equally, pushing down on this rim. And eventually, it will free up Let's turn this back in the sun so I can see what I'm doing, if you can't see. And eventually, as that rim tightens down, it'll push down on the whole tower free up those clips, I can pull out the clips, take everything back off. But as you can see, those I'd left plenty of stud up on top. Eventually I might cut them down a bit. I don't have any, any plans right now for using any higher, taller shocks. The standard stock Harley shock for my model bike, the 78 shovel head, is 12 inches. And that I'm aware of, the only difference in uh, shocks is you can get a 11 inch shock to lower the back end of your bike a bit to make it look a little bit meaner, which I'm not going to do because there's also other things that uh, a person may have to adapt if he lowers the back of his bike down. So eventually I'll shave off about four or five inches of those all threads on the top so I don't have to wind that nut all the way down and then all the way back up to get it off again. But that's going to do the trick, I think. We get the camera out here and give you a top view. Yeah, if I stand in the shade. So you can see that it's pretty well centered. I used all four all threads just to keep the rim and centered on itself. And yes, I could put a nut here and here, 
and tighten all four nuts down. But I think two is going to suffice. So, and then that leaves enough room down here so that uh, I can pull these two clips out, release the action, then of course take the rim off, and very carefully take the shock out of there, and then I can lay it down and and uh, take it apart, put you back in the stand here. Or I'll try to. There we go. Maybe not. There. So then I can put the shock back together, rebuild it, put it back together. So there you got it. That's my basic idea for a homemade. Well, maybe I better take the camera out again. <laughs> A homemade shock absorber spring compression tool. Where'd it go there? I must have. There we go. homemade spring compression tool. I know it's kind of hard to see in there, but it's in there. There's a shock absorber in there between the two rims. I think it's going to work all right. So I'll let you know after I get it done. I don't know if I'm going to do that today or tomorrow. So this is the doctor. And we'll catch you on the next video. I'll let you know how it goes. Thanks for watching.